What's up guys, so today we are reviewing the Mazda MX-30 EV. And honestly, this is probably one of the worst new cars you can buy. And you're probably like, why? Well, let's get into it. Why am I even driving this? Because my car is at the dealership once again, and this is the rental they gave me. So let's get into it. First and foremost, let's talk about the headlights. These headlights are standard on every trim. There's just two trims. They're basically the same, but this is the premium plus trim, the highest trim. And it adds a few features. One of those is these front parking sensors. Rear parking sensors come standard on every model, but this one has a front parking sensors. This is also the adaptive full LED headlights. So these swivel at night when you turn. And then just like, since this is built off the same platform as the CX-30, you get these fading LED turn signals in the front and the rear. Looking at the grill, I like that you get an actual grill and not some ugly smooth that, that most EVs do. Way nicer. Let's look at these wheels. All MX-30s come with these wheels and I think they look nice for an electric vehicle. I like how they didn't do some ugly wheels that most electric vehicles do. You get some plastic cladding, not too much a fan of that, but it's whatever. Black mirror caps are standard. I love black mirrors on cars and it clashes so well with this crystal soul red metallic paint. And yep, these mirrors are power folding. The car is just not locked right now. You also get this silver roof lining thing with the black roof right here. So this is like a three-tone car. Let's look at the back. These are the taillights you get, LED taillights. The, I don't know why. The back to me is kind of ugly a little bit. Maybe it's the shape. Some angles are better than others. These taillights are okay to me. I don't really have too much to say about them except that I like the fading look. And then down here, you get all this plastic cladding the parking sensors no exhaust outlets and it looks like ain't no way this is a spot for a tow hitch ain't no way this vehicle can tow let's go into the trunk though and show you guys it but first i'll show you got the e sky active badge and now opening up the trunk no power tailgate but this is more of like a hatchback and you get nothing i'm just kidding um, some little storage down here for, I don't even know what you could store down here. You get the Bose subwoofer for the Bose 12 speaker sound system. Yeah, the trunk, it's just a trunk. There's not really any features in the trunk. No way to fold down the seats besides pressing these buttons so you don't get the little things on the side. But you do get a lock button since this is built off the same platform as the CX-30. And look at that LED license plate lighting. Let's go on the inside and show you guys. Now, here's the key. This is the same key on so many Mazda models. You don't get the trunk button like you do in the models with the power tailgate. But yeah, you guys know the Mazda key. I'm not going to show you too much about it. This is the same door handle that's in the Mazda CX-30 and the Mazda 3. So it has a sensor on the back. And then when you unlock it, the mirrors fold out. Let's open it. Let's talk about the interior. So here are the standard seats you get on every model. Um, the base model will include these white seats. Since this is a premium plus model, you can also get these brown seats. All models come with these leatherette mixed with cloth seats with the stripe down the middle and the doo-doo stain from somebody else who had this car before me. Um, this leatherette is a really nice quality. I actually almost like it a little bit more than the leather you get in the Mazda CX-5. This is an eight-way power driver's seat with two way power lumbar the passenger seat is manual these seats are pretty comfy um you do get driver seat memory standard on every model and i really like these seats one thing that's interesting about the seat is if we open up the rear door you get controls to move the seat for the front passenger usually only kia and hyundai include that in the non-luxury car markets now sitting in the tier interior let's talk about some stuff first and foremost let's turn it on this is actually the first electric vehicle I've ever drove or reviewed, and it's the worst one. <laughs> Let's roll up the windows. One-touch windows are standard on every model. Um, you only get can roll around the front two windows. You do get power folding mirrors. And since this is built off the Mazda 3 and CX-30 platform, this has such nice feeling buttons. So when you press all these buttons, they feel really nice. You also get LED lighting in here, which is pretty nice. Um, but one thing that I really notice about 
this car let's turn it off because i want to waste electricity because why is this such a bad car it only has 100 miles of range for full charge seriously and i live in suburbia i don't live in a big city so literally i waste like all the range just driving home from the mazda dealership but it's whatever let's talk about the door panels this is where i feel like mazda really is kind of disguising the cheapness of this car not that it really feels that cheap but compared to other mazdas it does first and foremost is these door panels this is like a hard material up here it's not soft to rest your arm at least they gave you this recycled woven material which i think looks cool i'd much rather have that than some hard touch plastic but most other models of mazda will have soft up here and then right here this is basically hard too i mean they stitched it right here and put some leatherette but honestly it doesn't really feel nice at all it almost feels like some plastic and if you like really touch right here you can see it move a little bit so it's almost like it's not even glued in that place that well and it's not even soft at all and down here like, maybe it's soft right here no it's not it's hard once again most other models and models will have like this will be soft leatherette but this isn't this is the only soft part of the door panel is this armrest right here which is really nice but this is where i think mazda is showing is trying to make it look like this car is nice and premium but it really doesn't feel that nice and premium now you do get some cork material right here which i think is cool in the door panel and another thing you get the bose 12 speaker sound system this is one other upgrade that you get over the base model the base model just comes with the eight speaker sound system this Bose sound system sounds pretty decent honestly i noticed the bose sound system in the mazda 3 and the mazda 6 and the mazda cx5 all sounded better than this I don't know why this one doesn't sound that good. I adjusted the settings to how I'd like, but it's whatever. It still sounds pretty decent. Over here, you get a little storage area. So you could put a vape in there or something. Um, the view button for 360 degree camera. This turns on and off your driver assistance. Parking sensors on and off. And this is your traction control button. Honestly, I want to floor it with the traction control off and see what it's like. Let's talk about the steering wheel. This steering wheel comes off the Mazda 3 and the Mazda CX-30. And it's really nice. The leather feels really nice. It's pretty soft right here. Nice button clicks, which I expect from this Mazda steering wheel specifically. Because every single vehicle I've reviewed with this Mazda steering wheel has really nice button clicks. One thing that there's no... um traffic jam assist which i really think they need to add that because you could literally get that in a cx30 a cx5 and a mazda 3 i don't know why they don't have it in this mx30 electric vehicle because there's a few features that you can't get in any other mazda and plus this is like a city vehicle why wouldn't you get traffic jam assist whatever you get paddle shifters because this has a um eight speed zf transmission no i'm just kidding this is an electric vehicle it has no transmission basically this just does the regenerative braking and that always kind of confused me when people talk about regenerative braking because I never drove an electric car. Let me just explain it to you. So it has, I think, like two or three or four modes. I usually, I press the um, down paddle because if you press this twice, it'll go into its most powerful braking mode. So then it almost is like one pedal driving. So it'll basically like brake for you. It works really well, but sometimes you do have to press the brakes a little bit, but that's okay. It doesn't bother me, It but it doesn't default in that mode. I don't know if that's like, bad to always be in that mode this is the first electric vehicle i've driven so i always try to drive it in the regenerative braking mode because i always want to regenerate electricity because this only has 100 miles of range and here's another thing you know how long it takes to charge it, it literally takes like over 16 hours to charge at 100 percent when you're using a home battery so you have to get a go to a fast charger whatever let's talk about the rest of the vehicle let's turn it back on this gauge cluster is specific to the MX-30. I've never seen this in any other Mazda vehicle. And then if you press the info button, that's all you can do. Yeah. Um, it's okay. It's a gauge cluster. I don't really have much to say about it. Let's talk about down here. First and foremost, this is a soft leatherette material and it's nice armrest for your knee. But here's the thing. On the other side, it's not soft. It's just some scratchy material. I don't think that's bad or anything, but I just like to point that out. So then now you guys will notice that if you're ever in an MX-30. Let's talk about down here. Look at all this space, you guys, to put whatever you want. And you get two USB ports right here. These are the only USB ports in the car. Here's your 12 volt right there. And look at this, you guys. A power outlet. So you could plug in your blender or whatever, and then use all the range in your car. 
let's go back to let's go back to the middle part of the car though this is a really soft leatherette material you get all this cork right here and all these car reviewers be like, oh, this feels like it's going to not hold up well. And honestly, I don't like the cork in the car. I actually like the cork in the car. I think it's a nice accent color. It contrasts well with the or the brown piping right here. And it seems like it's holding up well. Look at that. It's dirty right there. But let me lick my finger and try to clean it off. That is not for me. So this is kind of gross. I don't even know what this is. The car came with this. And look, it comes basically right off with just licking it. So it seems like, and it feels pretty durable too. It doesn't feel like it's going to rip off or get all nicked up. Here's another thing. If you want to go into the armrest and grab your um, broccoli in the mini Mazda bag. Ooh, why do I kind of want this mini Mazda bag? What the heck? Um, you can obviously open the armrest to do that, which this is a pretty soft armrest. But look, oh wait, do I have a... Yeah, no, there's no USB port in there, so don't you guys think I'm plugged in right there. Oh, look, you can hide that away. And then let's open it back up, and then you can hide the cup holders away. I really like that feature, like, actually, I think that's really cool. I forgot to talk about, you get auto rain sensing wipers on every model. I love cars that include that. Now, let's talk about the climate controls right here. Single zone automatic climate control standard on every model. No dual zone automatic climate control. Let's turn them off so we don't race th waste the range. Most other cars have dual zone automatic climate control at this price point, especially electric vehicles. Um, you only get heated seats. It's three level. It's not turning on right now because the car isn't all the way on. But no cooled seats, which I think they should have added because you could get cooled seats in a Volkswagen ID4 and you could get cooled seats in a Chevrolet Bolt. EUV. So, so many other cars give you cooled seats in the electric vehicle class. It's not really that rare anymore. But talking about this touchscreen, honestly, I'm not a fan of having a screen over buttons, but I don't really mind it because you get a button right here for the temperature, or you can change the temperature right here, change the fan speed right here, or you can change it right here. Now, what does this settings button do? Well, all you can do is just change the brightness. Let's put it on the brightest because I have horrible vision. Um, and that's all you can really do. It doesn't really have much settings, but that's okay. Let's talk about the infotainment system. What is this little circle right here? Nothing. It doesn't do anything. I don't even know why it's there. And then what is this little rectangle right here? I don't know. 360 degree camera. I think that's standard on every model. If not, um, you had to go for this trim to get it. I forgot. I'll put it up on the screen. But it's a really good resolution. And going through the infotainment system, this is basically just Mazda's updated Connect, whatever it's called, infotainment system. I usually don't like it that much, but I usually don't like it that much. But um, I'm starting, it's starting to grow on me because I've been using it a lot lately. I do like their old infotainment system more, but it's kind of a little bit straightforward. It's just a little bit distracting when you need to like actually use it and you're driving. You have to take your eyes off. This has all Mazda safety features. So four collision warning, adaptive cruise control, lane departure, lane keeping assist. The only thing it doesn't have is the traffic jam assist. And one thing it does have is up in this heads up display. And this is what also comes on the premium plus trim versus the base model. Yes, every model comes with a heads up display, but the premium plus trim will give you front cross traffic alert. So if a car is coming, It'll beep at you. Like, you know, rear cross traffic alert. If you're backing up and somebody's coming, it beeps at you. This does that if you just stopped and somebody's coming forward. Honestly, I love that feature and I wish so many more cars had it. This also has rear cross traffic braking and rear um, parking, front and rear parking sensors, but rear auto emergency braking too. So whatever you're going to back into, this vehicle is not going to let you back into that. One feature this doesn't have though is the traffic sign recognition. I don't know why it doesn't have that. My Mazda 6 has that, and that's in 2018. Let's talk about this dashboard. This is just a soft plastic. It's not leather. Most mo other Mazda models will give you, like, some kind of leather on the dashboard. Opening up the glove box. Not lined in felt, but it does fall slowly, and it has a decent amount of storage. So no complaints with the glove box. And look at that, you guys. You get a metal glove box handle. That's really nice. I love a metal glove box handle. Um, but yeah, oh, and you get a normal open, a sunroof, and it does open and close, 
not just the sunshade, you can actually open and close the sunroof. So it's pretty nice. Um, honestly though, this interior for an EV, I, I think it's fine for EV, but for a Mazda, most other Mazdas have nicer interiors. I did forget to say this door panel is, has a decent amount of storage. Okay, let's open up the rear. So you have to have the front door open to open up the rear and then you just pull this like this and swing it open. Now let's try to get in. Look how much space that is. Barely any space, but my skinny ass will fit. Ah, I feel like I'm in a Tahoe. I'm just kidding. Let's close the door. Uh, it is actually a little bit cramped back here when you have the armrest up. If you were having to fit five people back here, then if they weren't skinny like me, then they would be freaking suffering. But if you're skinny like me, you could fit back here. Let's see. Get this armrest. No um, USB ports and no heated rear seats back here. And then no air vents. So this back seat isn't really a amenity back seat. A lot of other cars in the class will have a better back seat. But... Let's talk about some of the features you do get back here. So I don't really have that much space. I do have a decent amount of headroom. I, I'm actually comfortable back here. Um, I could tell the driver to move his seat up, but they might not want to, but they better because they have enough room up there. It's not like the front is really crap, cramped. And if they don't want to listen to me, I'll make them listen to me by pushing the seat. Oh, I don't, I'm sorry. I actually don't have enough, enough, enough space up here. So... Oh, too bad. I'm pushing the seat anyways. That's what's going to happen. You don't get it on the passenger side because the passenger side is only manual. And then when you do that, look at that. You have a generous amount of space. So this vehicle is actually pretty decent for the back space. Low key. Low key. Not high key. Low key. I'm, I'm fine back here. Some other people may. That's a terrible back seat. I'm be like, you need to compromise. Not every car is a Tahoe in the back. Everybody be like, I, it needs a maximum amount of back spe seat space. Bro, this is a small vehicle. Let's talk about this. You get the um, more of that recycled material. None of the cork like you do in the front. Speaker right here. Door panel to put your cup. And then you could put your phone right here. And then this is a soft padded armrest. And it's actually really soft. And I actually like it. And then you get a little speaker right here. These windows do not roll down, unfortunately. But it's whatever. Um, honestly, though, I don't mind sitting back here. Like, I would be comfortable on a long road trip. Although, I always say put your feet up like this, but now that I'm thinking of it, if you got in the accent, you'd probably... Ooh, not me cussing on camera. Honestly, though, if you put your feet up like this, you could put your... I always tell people, just put your feet up like this and sit like this in the car. But then if you got in an accident, you would probably be... Uh, paraplegic for the rest of your life. So, hmm, maybe this isn't the best, best back seat. I don't know, sit in it for yourself and you decide. Now let's open up the hood. I'm trying to do this one-handed so it might fall. There we go. How am I gonna, how am I gonna prop this up with one hand and holding my phone and filming at the same time? You guys wanna see a fail? I don't see me hurt myself and make this fall, hood fall on myself because that's really what's about to happen. I'm about to drop the phone in the engine bay. Okay, we did it. Here is why this vehicle is probably the worst brand new vehicle you can buy. First and foremost, the starting price is around $32,000. Um, I think this vehicle qualifies for that government tax credit. I don't even know. I'm not in the market for electric vehicle. I don't even know which vehicles qualify for the government tax credit. You can figure that out for yourself. But this one is averaged out or priced out to be $38,000, which is a pretty penny. And you could get a lot of other electric vehicles for that price, like the Chevy Bolt, which has more range, more horsepower, and it charges quicker. Let's talk about this battery though. This is a 35.5 kilowatt battery. And how much does it charge? It takes literally over 16 hours to charge to 100%. I literally had this car plugged in at my house in the garage all night and it only charges 70 miles 70 miles seriously that's horrible you only get how much range do you get with this 100 miles for a full charge are you kidding me and if you you can't even take this on the highway i mean you can nothing's going to stop you except you're going to run out of range hella quick and this thing apparently has a top speed of 87 miles per hour mm, 
I'll be the judge of that. I bet you I can get it up to 88. Here's another thing. How much horsepower and torque does it have? 140 horsepower. Seriously, 140 horsepower on an electric vehicle? That's horrible. Basically, every other electric vehicle has way more horsepower than that. And this has 200 pound foot of torque. Honestly, driving it, it doesn't feel that slow. But I bet you, you compare it to another electric vehicle and it is going to feel slow. But comparing it to a gas vehicle, it feels about average because of that torque and it's that you don't have to shift gears because it's a single speed transmission now let's talk about the charging once again if you have a level two charger this will charge in about two and a half hours and then if you have a level three fast charger this will charge in basically 36 minutes um where is the charger i forgot to show you guys right over here and here is i'm not going to open it and show you guys you guys don't really care that much it's just like any other car charger Here's one thing though that people don't talk about with electric vehicles. So I went to the EVgo charger and I me both my parents were with me because I needed them to pick me up and we went to a restaurant in their car and that while this was charging, it didn't even freaking charge. First off, we couldn't figure out how to get it to charge. We set up the account, everything, and it wouldn't even do anything. So I had to call. I actually had to ask somebody with a Chevy Bolt next to us, and they told us they had the same problem when they first started charging, and they had to call the number. Okay, so we called the number. What happens? The lady on the phone literally was like, okay, I'll charge it on my end. So she did. She literally was like, okay, it says it's charging now. I'm like, cool. So then we went out to eat, come back, didn't charge at all seriously but of course it took out my money out of my bank account of course it could charge my bank account but it can't charge as a vehicle wow and here's another thing so i charged it at home and it took really freaking long and it's what's so annoying about an electric charger versus a gas pump is it's way heavier than a gas pump okay whatever and then sticking it into the actual socket is way more work and taking it out is a lot of work. Like, literally taking it in and out, I, it would shake the car. Like, I literally was rocking the car back and forth trying to take it out. It was that difficult. My mom had the same difficulty also. So that's really annoying if you have to do that every time you have to charge. Plus, this only has 100 miles. You could only go around the city in this. Thankfully, Mazda is making this better. Because they're adding, I think in 2023, 2024, I don't even know. Sometime they're going to be adding some kind of rotary generator, I think, to this. So you could get more range out of it. Hopefully you get more horsepower too. Because $38,000 for 149 or 140 horsepower and 100 miles of range, this is a terrible buy. This is literally not worth it. People are like, why did Mazda even make this? Because this is a compliance vehicle. What is a compliance vehicle? A compliance vehicle is basically um, the United States has some kind of law where it's like, or some kind of thing where it's like regulation, where they're like, you need to have an electric vehicle being sold on your manufacturer or you can't sell cars in the United States anymore. So basically all cars, all manufacturers now have to have an electric vehicle or maybe I think a plug-in hybrid electric vehicle counts too. They have to have one of those to um sell cars in the united states so you're like acura doesn't have electric vehicle well acura is honda so honda does have an electric vehicle the clarity so i think that's why some manufacturers get away with it because if there was they're from a different brand like if it's two brands ford and lincoln and like ford has an electric vehicle but then lincoln does it then i think that's fine but since mazda it's their own brand this is what they came out with and this is they're just a compliance car this is only sold in california too so ha 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 everybody else watching this from other states you don't get to drive this you don't get to review this i do i'm just kidding <laughs> <laughs> oh, I like being done. Look at how nice this paint looks in the sun, though. I keep jumping back and forth between stuff, but honestly, I love Mazda's Crystal Soul Red metallic paint. Now, there was one other thing I wanted to talk about. What was it? This car is so bad. I don't even think Mazda expects anyone to buy this. They literally like, look, we're just gonna make whatever we can. We're gonna do the bare minimum with the vehicle, so that we could sell vehicles still in the united states which honestly i like that i like that they're focusing on gasoline vehicles they're coming out with some plug-in hybrid models but if this is the bare minimum whatever all right you guys we are driving the mx30 and 140 what was it, 140 or 149 horsepower whatever nine horsepower difference whatever one it is and 200 pound feet of torque Honestly, this does not feel like 140, 149 horsepower. Okay, let's kind of get it from this car a little bit. Um, 
It feels more like 180 horsepower. Maybe not. The torque makes it feel like it has more power than it does. And since it doesn't have to spend a lot of time changing gears, it feels quicker than it is. And that really surprised me about the vehicle. Everybody's like, 140 horsepower? Oh my God, that vehicle's gonna be so slow. It doesn't feel as slow as it is on paper. Now, another thing I noticed is driving it around town through suburbia, um, I waste less miles of electricity than I do driving my gas vehicle wasting gas miles and I'm driving it the same. You're driving this around town and just like going from just around, you really don't waste that many miles. Maybe it's because I'm in the regenerative braking mode. Um, honestly, I don't even know if you're supposed to keep it in that mode all the time. It doesn't default to the regenerative braking mode when you start driving. I think it should, but then I'm like, I haven't ever driven, this is literally my first electric vehicle I've ever driven, you guys, so I don't know if you're always supposed to drive in regenerative braking mode, but I do because this only has 100 miles of range full charge, and I didn't even charge it all the way, I charged it all the way overnight, and it didn't even charge all the way, it charged like 75 miles, so I'm always going to drive in regenerative braking mode because we don't live in the city, we live in suburbia, well look at that, we have 69 miles right now, and I have to take this car back to the dealership today, and the dealership isn't in my town. So the range anxiety is real. Now we are in the one pedal driving mode. We're slowing down to the stop. I am not pressing the brakes at all. And that's one thing I like about this vehicle. See, look, no brakes, no brakes. Oh, and the light turned green. Now let's start going again. Um, to put it in regenerative braking mode, you just press the paddles behind the wheel. There's like four different settings for it. So, um, I'm in the most powerful regenerative braking setting right now because I like using the one pedal driving. I pretty much have driven it the whole time. I don't think I've driven it actually without the one pedal driving. Now, we gotta get around this beamer. See, it doesn't feel that slow. You can get around people. And doing that, I think I wasted one mile. I might have been already on 68 miles, but you don't really waste much miles gassing it. Now, you do waste miles when you go on the highway. When I was driving, I had to drive back on basically a highway. It's not considered a highway, but it basically is. And I was driving like 70, and this thing was like just wasting miles. Oh, the lane keeping assistance bumped me back to the lane. Boss's driver assistance is okay. I'm not bump around with topics. Ma, let's talk about the driver assistance. Mazda's driver assistance is okay. I really do like the front cross traffic work. That works really well. But um, Mazda's driver assistance isn't as good as Hyundai and Kia's. They're, it's still okay, but you know, it's not gonna literally like drive in the lane for you and keep you lane centered, unless you have the traffic jam assist, which this does not have. And even then it doesn't even work that well. Mazda is more about driving. It's a driver's car a little bit. Now, one thing that I also want to talk about is there is, what drive mode are we in? Normal, that's the only drive mode you get. You want to go in sport mode? Mm, you better make up sport mode. And now, ride quality. This has pretty good ride quality. It's absorbing the bumps well and it feels soft and it feels smooth. This is a smooth vehicle to drive and I'm comfortable in here. So, honestly, this vehicle, I thought I would hate it more than I do. But actually, it's really just the range and the charging times that make this vehicle pretty bad. Yes, it's not that fast. It's not. The, it's a pretty slow electric car. But I could get over the slow feeling electric car if it had good range and it had quick charging times. But it doesn't. And that's the real big issue here. And Mazda knows that. That's why they're going to add, I think, a rotary engine generator to make this better. Honestly, this is a pretty... It's not as bad as you would think. This car isn't as bad as you can think. Let's get it on the twisties though, and let's see if it handles like a real Mazda. I did launch it a little bit and it made a ee noise, so I don't know how that is. Now we're at 64 miles. <laughs> um, honestly, you, you guys saw we were literally going from 60 to 81 
that was fine. Like, it didn't feel that slow. So, you know, on the highway, if you really need to take this on the highway, you should be fine passing people. This definitely has passing power. I mean, not like V8 passing power, even V6 passing power, even four-cylinder turbo passing power. But this isn't like a Nissan Sentra 1.8 CVT. This has a little bit of passing power. Now, oh, now I'm at 63 miles away. Now, let's take it on the turns a little bit. And now we are on the twisties. Let's see. Okay, it's gripping pretty well. I also forgot to say, this vehicle is front-wheel drive only, so no all-wheel drive. And this thing is kind of handling a CX-30 platform. This is not a smart road to be riding your bike on. Why are you riding your bike on this road? I swear, people be riding their bikes in the worst spots. Like, make a bike lane on this road. For, so then we don't have to have all these crosses with flowers next to random spots. Anyway, damn, we're whipping it. I didn't even realize. I forgot we're in an electric car and I forgot this has no range. So we're going like highway speeds. This thing is gripping really well, you guys. I'm actually really surprised at how well this is handling. This is actually kind of fun to drive on a twisty road like this. I'm actually enjoying it. And it doesn't really feel heavy. It's not weighed down by a huge battery pack. A 35.5 kilowatt, I don't really know much about batteries, but this is not a heavy battery pack. And this is perfect with the one pedal driving. It's actually, oh my God, I want 61 miles per hour. With the one pedal driving, this is actually perfect to drive. You don't have to ever press the brakes. And I feel like I could actually go really fast in these turns. Like, I don't want to go faster because I don't want to run out of range. But I'm like, I have not felt once like the car was going to want to step out a little bit or lose a little bit of control. This car feels like it has plenty of control. It's actually, why is this handling really well? Like, why does this feel like it's handled better than the CX-30? This literally almost feels like it's on rails. I actually think if, when Mazda comes out with the generator and all that for this vehicle, I think this vehicle will actually become like a pretty good electric vehicle if you can get over 250 miles of range and a quicker charging time. Oh. Yeah, that, that took that turn pretty well. Now, steering feedback. Honestly, the steering is pretty responsive. You move the wheel and the wheels turn. It's not one of those cars where you move the wheel a little bit and then nothing happens. Driving this just as a car, let's ignore the range for a second and the charging times. I actually like this car. Yeah, the interior isn't as nice as other mods is, but I wouldn't call this a horrible interior. It doesn't really feel cheap. And um, yeah, it only has 149 horsepower, but 200 pound foot of torque and no gears to roll through. This feels quick enough. Top speed is 87 miles an hour. Eyes at 81, it was barely wanting to go faster. Let's see if we can, should we try to pass this focus? Okay, yeah, I'm struggling a little bit to pass it. You need to get out of my lane. Imagine getting passed by a Mazda MX-30. <laughs> Why is that? They're like, damn, you just raced, wasted all your battery passing that person. Honestly, though, uh, from uh, ignoring everything, all the bad parts of this vehicle, I actually like this vehicle. I'm actually having fun driving it. And I do like the one pedal driving, going around turns, with the one pedal driving on, it makes it perfect. Now, this is where the car is starting to lean a little bit. This is where it's starting to be like a little bit sus, but this is kind of a sus part of the road. But I haven't driven any other electric vehicles and I need to. So I can't really compare this to another electric vehicle. But if you've never driven an electric car, go out and drive one. Because you they're actually not having to pay for gas that's pretty nifty and it doesn't the the no sound doesn't bother me and it doesn't drive all like weird it just drives like a normal car um i feel like a lot of people people like to hate on electric cars electric car doesn't i like my gas car to make sound electric car i'll never get an electric car mm, you're gonna have to one day everybody who says they'll never get an electric car mm, yeah we'll see about that only time will tell Go, people be saying that, I bet you they've never driven an electric car. I used to be saying I would never, no, I didn't ever say I'd never get an electric car, but I used to be like, I'm not a really a fan of electric cars, but after driving one, I kind of am a fan of electric cars. Maybe I'm going to turn into a nerd. But buying this, I wouldn't get.
get this too little range. It's only sold in California here. Charging times takes way too long, not enough horsepower. And for the money, literally, you could get a brand new Chevy Bolt with 250 horsepower, 250 plus miles of range, and I think it has a way, I forgot the charging times, it has a way quicker charging time, $27,000. This starts at $32,000. Yes, this has a lot more standard features, but for an extra $5,000, you can add in basically all the features that this has in the base model on the Chevy. And then you'll have a quicker car with way better range and way better charging time. So honestly, it just goes to show. And you can get a panoramic sunroof in the Chevy Bolt EUV that actually opens. So that's another thing that the Chevy has over this. And you can get heated and cooled seats with heated second row seats in the Chevy Bolt. So, and you guys know, I'm a Mazda person, and nine times out of ten, whatever car it is, comparing the car, two cars, I'll choose a Mazda over a Chevy, but it looks like Chevy won this one. That's just how bad this car is. Don't hate me, Mazda. Don't be like, we'll never send this person a vehicle, even though they've never, nobody's ever sent me a vehicle, but I do want to get sent PR vehicles. Don't hate me for saying that, but I'm just being honest. This car isn't that good, but it's really just because of the range. That's really it. Yeah, the horsepower is slow, but you could get over that. But overall, hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching. And like and subscribe, or you're going to have a bunch of goat heads in your bed, and it's going to poke into your skin.